Hello, I'm George Cairns, and in lesson six, we're going to look at how to use Digital Photo Professional 4, Canon's free image editing software, to sharpen up a shot to bring out more delicate detail and create a print with more punch. And you can kick off by downloading Sharpen Start and then browse to it in the folder window, and it'll appear like so. We can then pop up to View and we can go to Edit image window and here's our shot. Now to discover which areas are most likely to be nice and sharp we can pop down to here and turn on the autofocus points so you can see which AF points were used by the camera to capture the shot. So it may be the case that these unused autofocus points are a little bit distracting so what you can do is click the triangle flyout icon here and say that we only want to see the autofocus points that have been used. These ones that are in focus here so let's click close and now you can see just this active point here, everything else has been hidden. So if we click to zoom in, you can then see that this is the area that should be the sharpest in the shot. And if we look at some of the details in the background, you can see, yes, indeed, these are slightly softer. And that's partly because if I scroll down to here, you can see we used an aperture value of 7.1. So if it had been narrower, we'd have got more of the background in focus, but this is looking fairly soft in comparison with the active autofocus point. Now we can try and post-production sharpen these areas here to create a little bit more detail and that will reveal some of the detail in the background but we're not trying to work a miracle. We're not going to create this area looking as sharp as the area we've focused on. So it's really crucial that you use the right aperture setting in your camera to get the important parts in focus. You can only do so much in the post-production stage to recover detail that's not actually in focus like these areas here. But even areas that are nice and sharp, like these parts here, can be sharpened up even more by increasing the contrast around edge details in the frame. And that's how sharpening works. And you'll find the sharpening tools down here at the bottom of the edit panel. Now, first of all, we've got an unsharp mask option automatically selected. You could just go to sharpness. That gives you a single slider. And as you drag that to the right, I'll just go right to the top here. That's increasing the contrast around the edges of objects in the image. And that is creating a sharper looking shot. Let me turn that off. Turn it on and you can see it does have a little bit more impact. Look at the background bell there. Let me turn sharpness back on and you can see now that it looks a little bit clearer, but it's added sharpening artifacts such as fuzzy pixels around the edge. You've also got halos as well. If we have a look here, you can see this white halo around this section here. Let me turn that off. The halo disappears. Turn it on again and you can see the halo appear and you can get white or black halos depending on the details in the picture. So sharpness on its own is a very limited tool. So we can drop that down to a lower value to try and get a compromise. We're bringing out texture and detail in the wood here, but it's still adding halos. So what I'm gonna do is set this to the unsharp mask option, which gives you more control thanks to the extra sliders. Let's just dial these down to zero so you can see what each slider does when I bring it into play. And let's start from strength. That's the same as a strength slider we looked at in the sharpness option earlier, and that increases the spread of the contrast change. So if I take that to the right, you can see we've exaggerated the grain in the photograph. We've got halos around the edge like so. And if we increase fineness, that increases the spread of the contrast change. So if I take that right up to the top again, you can see we've got stronger and wider spread halos around the edge here. So while things do look sharper, there's also lots of sharpening artifacts being added. You can even see halos around the edge of the rock here where it's contrasting with the sky. And threshold just dials down these two sliders to make them less strong. So it's like a master volume control, if you like. If I take that to the far right, it's going to reduce the effect of these two sliders. So you can see in combination, we can get a balance between sharpening at the shot or keeping artifacts at bay. So let's take this down to a more subtle five. Let's drop threshold down to zero for the moment. And then I'm just gonna drop the spread of the contrast change to a lower value such as four. And if you wanna see what that's doing, we can untick sharpness. There's the before, turn it on again. There's the after, it's making more details pop out here in the delicate wood and indeed on the bell. Watch the bell again, before, after. So the contrast change is making these details pop out nicely, but we've got noise there in the sky. So let's just bring in threshold now until that noise disappears. And now that keeps the halos to a minimum, keeps the noise to a minimum as well, but we still have the benefit of the contrast change to make the shot look sharper. And we can click and drag to have a look at the background bell. Let's turn sharpening off. There's the before, there's the after. So it does look a little bit sharper, but we're not gonna achieve miracles there. We can't really get this looking as sharp as a foreground area because the camera was focusing on the foreground here and with the aperture setting, the background's always gonna look a little bit softer. 
But if we click to zoom out, you can see now we've got a sharper shot that's going to have a print with more punch and reveal more delicate texture and detail in the areas that are supposed to be nice and sharp, like these areas here. And we now also know how to keep sharpening artifacts at bay thanks to the threshold slider. So if I'm happy with my post-production sharpening, I can then go up to File and choose Convert and Save, and that will create a JPEG version of my sharpened shot. So I can call this one Sharpen Start, or just Sharpen JPEG. You can keep the output resolution at 350 if you're going to print it for lots of detail, or drop it down to 100 if it's going to go onto the web. And that creates a separate JPEG version of my sharpened RAW file. But the RAW file is always going to be accessible. The original detail is always going to be there, so I can fine-tune my sharpening settings at any time in the future. There we go. So that's how you perform some post-production sharpening to bring out delicate details while keeping sharpening artifacts at bay. And we can compare the before and after by clicking down here. And then you can just toggle to different options, such as this overlap option here. Click to zoom in, and you can see the before looking quite soft, missing delicate detail. And then at the after version here, details are popping out more, especially in the bell, which is quite an important part of the picture.